If you're thinking like me, you're beyond sick and tired of hearing that tired, hackneyed, and fallacious line that it's not women, it's feminism. I mean, this line, this line that gets trotted out over and over again from everyone, especially from MRAs, uh, is getting more than just a little old. It's getting more than just a little old because it's not accurate. And we saw this exemplified in that somewhat moronic and pretty idiotic hit piece by Wooly Bumblebee attacking men going their own way, where he said, it's not women, it's feminism. Now, it's funny because my videos, Barbarossa's videos, and to a lesser extent, Girl Rides What's videos have all demonstrated repeatedly that feminism does not exist without women. Symbiosis, synergy, they exist with each other. You do not have feminism without women. And I'm really tired of hearing it. It's become a new PC propaganda line, quite frankly. It's become a new, C, a new PC propaganda line for primarily for MRAs, but also for, for fake MRAs like uh, Wooly Bumblebee, who really don't have men's best interests in mind. I'm going to get to that a bit later. I mean, I'm tired of listening to this because it's simply not true. And it's not just from MRAs. You'll hear it from traditional conservatives. It's not women. It's feminism. As if feminism is this separate entity, it has nothing to do with women. Ask these people, does feminism have anything to do with women? What is, more specifically, ask them, what is the relationship of feminism to women? All of these people need to ask themselves this fundamental question, and they need to come up with a good answer. They can't just brush it aside, not anymore. There's too much evidence to suggest, they need to demonstrate, that feminism is the nether desire, if you will, of the female, the human female. All the negatives turn into one giant colossal ideology. And more importantly, and most importantly, as I've often liked to distinguish between capital F feminism and lowercase f feminism. It is the non-disparate masses, the Borg consensus, as it's uh, often called the manosphere of women, that go along with it. It is the typical, non-reflective, non-thinking female who acquiesces to the benefits that she has wrought based upon the efforts of active feminists who proclaim themselves as such. And they turned a blind eye to its evils and to the negative consequences that it's had on society, on men, and on the world. They turn a blind eye to it. The masses, yes, the vast majority of women, even now, as I speak, are reaping benefits that have been brought about by politicized feminism. And even though they might not call themselves feminists, their complicity is clear. They are reaping the benefits, and I am willing to bet money they would be loath to give up those benefits. They would simply not want to give those benefits up. And at some point in time, those absurd degrees of acquiescence absurd degrees of acceptance irrespective of the negative consequences it, these things might have on others that needs to be taken to task and women in, on the whole need to be taken to task on this that's why we're not going to listen to the line anymore it's not women it's feminism which has become as meaningless as Nawalt quite frankly it really has as I said in the past, Nawalt is technically true, but it describes nothing. To say that not all women are like that doesn't help to solve anything, explains nothing. And to say that it's not women, it's, it's, femini it's feminism, does, this, does equally little for men. 
I mean, how does how does a line like the Waltz help a man trying to navigate the the very confusing world he finds himself in, without the knowledge that he may acquire later through uh, MGTOW videos and to a lesser extent through MRA videos? How will he acquire this when you just say not all women are like that? Because that's the advice he's being given right now, sitting at a table in some pub or cafe, from a woman. Coming from a woman. And, not to say it's more advanced, but the, the sort of p PC, MRA, propagandistic version of Nawalt is, well, it's not women, it's feminism. The level of complicity that women have in going along with feminism cannot be overlooked or overheard. It's there. And unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, we can't choose to ignore that anymore. And fortunately for us, we're too well informed to believe that crud. We don't believe it anymore. So when an idiot like uh, Wooly Bumblebee, and quite frankly, what she said was idiotic, hence I'm calling her an idiot, goes out and says, well, it's not women, it's feminists, and then uses Nawalt deflections alongside uh, the, the PC, the more PC propagandistic version of that Nawalt deflection, you know something's up. You know something's up. And I'm, I'm just beyond tired of listening to this line. But what you will get sometimes, dare they concede the truth, dare they concede the truth that in fact, women are somehow responsible for at least accepting the consequences of feminism, and this is a favorite of Tradcons, is that women simply cannot help themselves. The poor darlings, so vulnerable in their puerile state, they can't help themselves, so they just go along with it. It's not their fault. They've been brainwashed, they've been manipulated. Well, maybe they have, but once again, withholding any sense of adulthood, any sense of of responsibility that goes along with adulthood to women, uh, doesn't get us any further either. So, when the concession is made that synergy, symbiosis, and complicity exist between women and feminism, politicized feminism, they simply say, well, it's not their fault. The famed evolutionary pussy pass, you know, it's either not their fault or they have nothing to do with it. Do you see the principle here? Do you see the pattern? It's recurrent, constant. It is the very definition of the spoilt child. And how do I define a spoiled child, or any spoiled child? It's probably your definition as well. It is a child that is treated as such, but receives all the goodies it wants no matter what, and no matter how absurd those desires might be. The child that gets the to all the toys he wants, gets to see the movies he wants, the television programs, where there are no restrictions placed on that child, that's a spoiled child. And essentially, that is what the human female is in today's society. A spoiled child. A child that gets everything she wants and suffers no negative consequences for that. For that desire to have everything. There is very clearly a biological complicity that exists in the human female that goes hand-in-hand hand with feminism. But the most important question I want to ask, to pose in this video, to all of you, to the MRAs, to the so-called Nawalt women, all those Nawalt women, the legions of the women who b belong to Nawalt, is that what have women done for men? What are women's intentions towards men? Do women have the best intentions towards men? So, meanwhile, the past, say, 50, 60 years, we've seen uh, Western society crumble slowly at the seams uh, in large measure due to political policies put in place by the actions of politicized, or capital F, feminists. 
What have we seen the lowercase f feminist, the typical average woman do, other than go along with it? Heedless of the consequences of her apathy, if you want to call it that. See, the problem, as Barbara has pointed out, is that Everyone is self-interested, but you re it reaches a point when self-interest simply becomes dangerous. Self-interest becomes dangerous when it affects others negatively and when you don't give a shit about the consequences that are reaped upon and wrought upon others because of your self-interest. And that's what we have in the modern era with the modern female. The desire for security, her hypergamous instincts, all of them satiated in part by the faceless man, in part by the various alpha male brutes that she engages in courtship with. These have negative consequences for uh, large swathes, no, masses of men. And they turn a blind eye. They turn a blind eye. So that's the fundamental question everyone needs to ask themselves, especially MRAs who like to trot out the line that it's not feminism. It, Sorry, it's not women, it's feminism. They need to examine that. What have women, on the whole, in the large majority, done? What has the board consensus done for men? Now, if you could come up with a neutral answer, which I'm sure with a bit of finagling and a bit of wordplay you could, you could say, well, they haven't done anything for men, which in itself speaks volumes. But their apathy, their, their, their desire, their self-interest. And once again, this is why these arguments such as, well, men do it too, which is another form of, you know, men are self-interested too, men this and that, are invalid. Because the consequences that we have to deal with as a result of women's overly indulged desires have become disastrous for men as a whole. That's what they don't get about MGTOW. All these people, these so-called MRAs, they don't get about MGTOW that we are responding to a poisonous, toxic, toxic atmosphere. The air has become unbreathable. And so we're putting on gas masks and going to an oxygen-rich environment, essentially. And the simple fact is that no one with a brain can come up with evidence to suggest that women have had the best intentions for men over millennia. Biology disproves this, given the dis disproportionate amount of genetic material in favor of women as opposed to uh, men's genetic contributions. And more importantly, in the modern era, we've just seen politicized feminism backed by the blue pill masses of the lowercase f feminist just steamroll over men in every regard, in healthcare, in education, in marital fail, fail affairs, in family affairs, in even in the gaming world now. I mean, everywhere you see it. What's the cause? Well, the cause is simple. You do not have feminism without women. Feminism, if you recall, came to power, came to prominence, because it was women's desires. And what women desire, the pussy-whipped, pussy-begging, mangina population at large, caves into those desires. What those desires are, men give it to them. What women want, men give it to them. It doesn't matter what it is. The greatest minds are at a loss sometimes when it comes to women. I have friends who are brilliant, and yet they become babbling idiots when it comes to women, mystified, mystified by the moist hole that women seem to use to charm the entire world with. It's incredible. They completely lose sight of everything. I'm speaking of mathematicians and physicists, and and perceptive historians here. So, MGTO, for the ill-informed, is a concept that has arisen from this muck of unbreathable toxic air, essentially.
the acknowledgement that you do not have feminism without women. It does, hello? Yes, I'm talking to you, the unaware. You do not have feminism without women. And consequently, we cannot forget the fact that the vast majority of men are enablers and allow this stuff to go on because they give women everything they want. The very definition of a spoiled child. Because of the moist hole that she happens to bear. Pretty silly. Remember what I said in my previous video? All about inflated value. Perception. You notice carefully what I said, perceived value. I am not of the opinion that the moist hole and uterus of a woman uh, renders her of greater value than a man. It's simply the perception of men at large that creates an overinflated value that doesn't actually map onto reality. Remember, man is the determiner of things that they are and that they are not. If he perceives the moist hole in the uterus to be of great value, then in some plane of existence, in some reality, they will assume these properties. And the entire world will kowtow to this. The entire world will dance around it. So yes, that is the fundamental question. Do women, in general, on the whole, do the majority of women have men's best interests in mind? Do they even have fair and equitable interests in mind? Or do they only have their own interests in mind? Do they only have their own solipsistic desire for self-preservation and self-interest and security to the point where the entire world could be washed away in a deluge of biblical proportions, and metaphorically speaking, it's happening, without them paying any attention to it, without them paying any heed to it? Is that what we actually have effectively? I challenge anyone, anyone out there, to present solid evidence that there is no connection between your average woman and feminism. Here, I'm saying it out loud, and I'm posing a challenge. Present evidence to me or to any other man going his own way that feminism exists in a vacuum and has no relationship, and specifically no close relationship to the average woman. Present solid evidence suggesting that it has nothing to do, the two have nothing to do with each other. And do not resort to the argument that women cannot help themselves. We men, for millennia now, or even more than millennia, have been required, nay, forced, to suppress whatever dark urges we have, our primitive nature. But women are not asked the same. No, they're simply told to just do whatever they want, the spoiled child having a tantrum. She is allowed to indulge all of her dark interests and urges. Men are not allowed to indulge any of theirs. And this is not me endorsing men's dark urges and, and interests and instincts. No, it's simply saying that we have been, over thousands of years, required to suppress it, to adapt, to become civilized. Has the woman been asked the same? Has she been asked to do the same? I think not. So once again, do women have men's best interests in mind, or only their own, heedless of the consequences when the negative environmental fallout, the metaphysical nuclear fallout of their actions, affects their environment? And give me evidence to show that women and feminism have no connection to each other whatsoever. And do not come up with a lame excuse that women are simply more gullible and more childlike and they, they can't help themselves, the poor darlings. I'm pr quite frankly tired of hearing that one, too. It's time for the whole world to wake up. It's time for some MRAs, at least, to wake up. And it's time for all the Nawalting, feminism isn't the same as women, blah, 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 people to wake up as well. Because the more, the more you say it, does, the less it's going to be true. You know, the, say, say it the more often you say it as often as you want. It's not going to make it true. At the same time, at the same time, things are getting worse and worse. So you want to know what Mikto is? It's Mikto is a realization of reality, and it's dealing with reality on its own terms, not in some preconceived notion or utopian vision or some nonsense like that. No, Mikto is dealing with shit on its own terms with its within reality. 
Some of us want to live in reality. Some of us prefer the truth. Whether it's harmful in the sense of whether you're happy or not is irrelevant. I recently had some guy make a video uh, totally irrelevant to my material. He said he made a video going on about a bunch of people at a marathon and asked if you know, are these people just delusional or they're happy? I've never even talked about happiness. No, what I'm talking about is the truth. I just want to know. Can you provide evidence to show that women have nothing to do with feminism? I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on, uh, for the day that happens. And I'm also waiting for the day to show that women have men's best interests in mind. Clearly not. And yet the man begs and scrapes and busts his ass to please the woman goes against his own best interests in many cases in large measure in order to please her. You don't see the reciprocity. So we're all just fed up with it. We're tired of it. And all we care about is the truth. The unadorned unadulterated truth. And you can offer up as many propagandistic lines as you want, but that's not going to change anything. See, this is the time to wake up. For everyone to wake up. Join the awakened. That's what I'm telling you. All you MRAs and the Walting folk and all the rest of you, join the awakened. Going PC is not the route that's going to help you become awakened. It's not the route that's going to help you gain the support that you need if you actually want to make some kind of progress. That's all I have to say. Take care.